The SML is alive and well. Good afternoon, and how do you do? Tom Battinger here with The Best Taco as we look to break down and look forward to some of the stronger games as we're going to see on the minor league level. So getting into this one this week, four matches, and I think all of them are pretty interesting. Uh, starting things off pretty hot as well with that set against Flashpoint into Queso. And this is going to be the first time Team Queso are having to play without their traditional coach, Alpha Jackal, since mm -hmm. he, you know, admitted to the fact that he was going to be moving on to a possible SPL thing. So a lot I of really cryptic. know too much about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ambiguous, but that's besides the point. The main story here is the fact that this is a, an Alpha Jackal as Queso, and how much is that going to possibly impact them against Flashpoint? Because Flashpoint are the number one team and have been for a while in European minor league. Well, right now, Flashpoint uh, certainly going to be looking to climb and stay up on top. 5-1-6. Or five wins and one loss. They're up ahead six games. Team Queso, as you said, three and three. Looked pretty strong, but a lot of their strength kind of came from that strategy. So we'll see what Alpha Jackal has kind of left them with and how strong they're able to trudge forward. Simplicity and Out Cold Gaming will catch playing a little bit later today, and they make up the bottom of the European minor league. And that should still be a pretty interesting watch as well, because even though Out Cold have been bottom of the standings for a little bit, they are taking on a new support player. you got to keep in mind that with Breezy joining these guys uh, i believe he still goes by fanatic breezy if sure. i'm not mistaken although i'm sure he probably wants us to just call him breezy but he used to be a world champion um or was formerly a world champion over in the heroes of the storm side of things and so he's you know trying to find his rhythm now in smite and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the guy has to offer with uh, that set today later on but you know we start the day off with Queso and, and Flashpoint. And sure. I, I think that Queso are a team that have kind of proven to us already that there's a lot of potential there. I think Alpha Jack will definitely help to unlock a little bit of that. But Warchi, I think, has actually been doing a, a really fantastic job for this team back in the mid lane on Mages. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed this team in general. Warchi in the middle lane has, has been a big part of what's going on. And Draco Marino has always been one of the big points for me out of the uh, the support role. Here we take a look at Worst Turtle, who's also been doing some work in that jungle. Everything's seeming to come together this season for Team K. So despite the fact that they're uh, two games behind, five and one, and, and three and three being the first and second place respectively, uh, I do think that Team K. So has a lot going for them and can certainly have a bright future. I, I think one of the only downsides about Queso is that they do feel rather inconsistent at times. And sure. a lot of the times that they do have those hot and cold performances, it's usually banking off how well is Worst Turtle really performing that day. We've seen him have performances where he's done less than 4,000 player damage in like 40 minute plus games. And we've also seen him hard carry this team. Sure. So when you have somebody that's just so prone to being either or i think that that's a level of inconsistency you can't afford to have against teams that are established like flashpoint got to agree with that one and when you when you look forward and look try to improve your squad i think the biggest thing is is that holistic approach understand what flashpoint are, be, are going to be able to bring to you and how to best counteract that sort of situation and when you look at what flashpoint's able to do i think individual prowess is very strong so when you take care of it or when you look at worst turtle for example you've got to understand that you know it's you've got to be able to come out every time and if that's not possible look other places in the short side julio has been doing a really good job for the team queso and uh, i really like what the soul laner has done it's just so aggressive I, I think that that's what makes it so much fun and understanding as well that flashpoint we've already pretty much confirmed the fact that they're a pretty well established sure. team by yeah. now i mean they've been dominating <laughs> in the european minor league uh and the majority of their performances as well so here today, I think that I'm most interested to see Flashpoint starting to break away. I can't really say break away from like the, the SML like traditions and norms and like expectations because this is a team now with very realistic um, possibilities of coming to land. I think what you're saying, what you're trying to get is they're they're trying to elevate themselves above the rest of the crowd and and separating yourself by two games is certainly a good look. It's what you want to see when you are trying to, like you said, distance yourself from the rest of the minor league. You, you see the minor league and it's all competitive. And Flashpoint are trying to say. Y'all can be competitive amongst yourselves. We are trying to bring it to that next level, that step up. And we've seen it, and a lot of it, a lot of it has come out of this guy right here. Johnny in the jungle. It's hard not to talk about Johnny when you mention Flashpoint because you have to. oftentimes he feels like, I won't say he's the heart and soul, but he's definitely 
a huge portion <laughs> of this team, and I, those guys know it as well. It's not Absolutely. like this is you know us just trying to gas up Johnny like unreasonably. I, I think that every single member from that Flashpoint roster would agree Johnny's a huge part of the reason why we're so successful. Two very cool things I think about Flashpoint is that one, it's been a while since we've had a team that just is has a player so good that they just rest on it. Reminds me of old school adapting, old school answer if you want to go all the way back. Nowadays, our teams are really, really, really this this holistic approach. All five players can do it, and I think that's the other point is that Johnny is still very much the 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 heart, the head, the the, the core of this team, and he will go 15 and two, and that's how this team will find wins. But what has allowed this team that is stuck in a stick together for a number of years to sort of take that next step is the improvement of everybody else there. You're seeing stuff out of Sibi. You're st seeing stuff out of the Caspanify Fusify duo lane. You're seeing a lot of good things across the board, and Johnny has just kind of always been Johnny on the spot, and now that he has a great supporting cast, or his players have kind of ascended to that next level, now the team is looking scary, and that's just really important. I think once you play together with the team for long enough, you just eventually become so comfortable with them that your level sure. of synergy can be tough to match, and that seems to be the case for a lot of the other European teams in the minor league. Absolutely. Well, first, picks and bans for Flashpoint and Queso on the way here as we jump into the first game. And looking at things, uh, usually team usually Flashpoint has out Kwong banned against them or some sort of strong jungle carry because of the fact that Jody is just so devastating. With that in mind, Shibalake will be the first ban, of course, and we'll see how everything kind of winds up in that direction. Very evident that Queso are trying to take away as many team fighting components as possible, and it makes sense when dealing with Flashpoint. I think that Queso has a, a very interesting style of play where oftentimes it feels like they're very pick oriented. So Flashpoint is a team that you know is going to have a sick team fight just because those guys have been together for so long and they seem to really bounce off of each other pretty well. I like the target ban away though of the RDO. That's a pretty heavy flex pick that Flashpoint likes to run. And it's also going to uh, hurt what, as far as the ambiguity is concerned, like, like you said, the flex pick, certainly a very big deal. Merlin and Arthur banned out here by Flashpoint as we look towards the first pick. Team Queso, they've got a couple of different options here. Normally, uh, what do you expect to see? They could go for the Freya or the Bacchus. Achilles has been another heavily yeah. contested god. This warrior has just been running rampant. It's I think it's the amount of damage that he can exert in the early phases that can be really difficult to tackle. So that makes him a, a pretty strong priority pick, but right it away. does leave Flashpoint open for Johnny's Ale. Just right away. This is this is how you want to start your day if you're if you're Johnny. You're going, okay, if you're gonna give me the chance, I will absolutely play the Al Kwong. And here it comes. Next to Giannis, who has also been very successful for this team as well. Not only does Giannis kind of do his thing and, and, and the mid laner can do it really well, but Al Kwong also going to be gifted some extra exit strategies. I'm not sure I even need to see the rest of this draft. <laughs> How many times have we seen teams allow the AO through for Johnny and yeah. they've just stomped? It's tough. I, I, I really think that that is an oversight, a huge oversight by Queso to, to allow Johnny his number one pick. And not respond with a healer. Right, a lot of times when you see execution characters, you can respond with a Guan Yu or a Hell. Well, maybe not a Hell, but you can respond with some sort of way to avoid that. Not going to be the case this time around. You've got Sir Ket, which can add dots on Al Kwong. I do like Sir Ket into Al Kwong, but it is Al Kwong. And right away, Flashpoint get a draft that looks like they kind of came here in blind pick. CB would have loved to opt for the Sun Wukong. Johnny would have loved to opt for the Al Kwong. I mean, all three of these picks are really, really, really Flashpoint centric. I don't even think that the Giannis is a bad look for Flashpoint either. Not I mean, all. I don't think that you were trying to say that by any means no. by not mentioning it, but <laughs> Flashpoint have a ton of mobility and, and invis right now, and so my main concern for Queso with these double warriors is traditionally Achilles Bologna, if I see that on my team, I'm like, yes, let's go but how are you going to be expected to fight against a team that has so many different disengaging components mm. behind it I, I think that this Giannis is a really smart selection choice in response to the uh, Achilles Bologna but the Giannis happened first and I understand that but it's just the fact that Queso kind of buckled down with the Bologna going for the double warrior front line mm -hmm. and I I'm just not sure how that's going to fare against Flashpoint when they're going to be able to just run away from it well, Team Queso has been very creative, so we'll see if they have any of that left in their veins. Hachiman will be the carry of choice here for Flashpoint, and everything seeming very uh, traditional as far as where people are going to go. Sun Wukong short side for Sibi, Ao Kwong in the jungle, and Hachiman likely to be in the hunter role. Team Queso, though, finishing things off, will bring a Vulcan man here for the middle lane. 
And you're looking for likely a support, maybe a jungler. Something with heavy CC, I think. Oh, well, Jingwei, I guess. That makes sense, actually. I'm completely ridiculous. I guess you Never mind. might be seeing um, <laughs> either Bologna or Achilles support is what I... Uh, actually, it could be the Sirket support. I, I'm expecting Sirket... So, yeah, the, I, I... Achilles in the jungle. Yeah, and both both of... Yeah, you know what? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the morning. I think we're going to see uh, Sirket support and then Achilles over there in the jungle. But the dog man will come out for Flashpoint. Fenrir, a very offensive character. We'll see how it works out. Team Queso, Flashpoint, game number one. Casters, take us away. Thanks so much, Taco and Ridiculous Tom. We are here live in the morning with Queso versus Flashpoint. Two teams, Tully, that have had a pretty good time of things just lately. They're not too bad in the standings. Better for Flashpoint, I would say, than Queso. Sitting at number one is Flashpoint at five and one. Queso still in the middle of a pact of three and three historically between these two teams. It's a third rematch thus far. After week one and week five performance, Flashpoint getting the better end of Queso in a 2-0 victory in each of those sets. Well, what can Queso do this time round? First off, they're going to be sending Drake and Reno on support circuit over to the right-hand side of the map for a cheeky speed buff invade, but Flashpoint have grouped up four early on to make sure that's not going to happen so easily. Draco Marino playing the circuit support. We've seen this before in SPL in the minor league. Supports don't want to make junglers have an easy time securing their speed buff. And as a circuit with that death bane, if, even without the assassin's blessing, it's a very respectable potential steal that you have to worry about. So far though on the right hand side, Julio on the Bologna did proxy the first tier one wave that came through on that solo lane. So he's already up in experience, now invading the blue buff as Draco Marino continues to follow Johnny around like some sort of lap dog throughout the jungle at the moment, trying to make sure um, he takes him for a walk. Uh, but now finally Fusify returning the favor, so he's going to at least secure the back camps and more importantly, preventing the red buff timing, I think, is what Draco Marino was trying to do because it doesn't seem that Flashpoint are really getting stopped thus far. They got their speed, they got their back camps. The only thing that they really couldn't do necessarily was their own blue buff thus far, it looks like, because that was invaded. Yeah, a little bit more gold for Queso as it stands at the moment, specifically with Flashpoint as well, having to... Well, group up a little bit more around these buffs, share the experience a little bit more, and the gold too, so they don't get as much of it if it's multitudes of people around the area. And this should really hurt out Sibby not getting his blue buff on that right side of the map as a Summon Kong player to, in order to cudgel to Master's Will. It takes two abilities and then plenty of base attack attacks in the early game to clear this wave. And Julio, all he needs is to wield the bludgeoned hammer doesn't even need to actually get the slam after the fact. So this is a little advantage, I would say, for the Bologna solo. Yeah, Bologna so far, though, looks like he's working towards the Gladiator Shield. Pretty much a standard in the solo lane for the most part. Most of the solo laners that we see, Tolly, are pretty much they're all about sustain. Most solo laners would go for the uh, Gladiator Shield, but in Bologna's case, maybe more attack speed, mm. probably going to go for the Berserker Shield instead, get the sustain option going, so that way you synergize a little bit better with your Scourge and even the Blood Legend hammers. I like the little cancel out from Fusify there on the damage after the fact. Didn't want to continue the chase on just in case he gets pulled into the tower mm -hmm. by Chekio there. So very wise. Chekio though, level three as it stands for the time being. This Hunters just lately started to see the Boots Rush come into play just at the moment. This is more for the mobility, I guess, totally than anything else than the additional power. But you do lack a bit of power in the early game by going this route. You do. You're not going to be able to get the sustain as well. So if you do get poked out in a 1v2 scenario, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But for both of these Hunter specifically, Jingwei very safe utilizing that passive to get back to lane as Kaspainify playing the Hachiman has a lot of mobility in terms of that mounted archery, so he should never really die once he hits level 5. Okay, so really trying to keep this pressure going in the jungle. Blue Buffy and Invader at the same time as Draco Marino is trying to trade out with Johnny at those back harpies there. Didn't manage to get many of those, but he did slow down Johnny on trying to defend the blue, which was invaded and given over to Julio once more. So Draco Marino thus far in the experience per minute category is dead even with Fusify, so his kind of nuisance rotations, I would say, has been successful because he kind of separated the gap, allowing Worst Turtle a little bit of a lead, I would say. Yeah, it's actually allowed them both to be in a very similar situation, even though they've been doing the same sort of thing. Draco Marino and Vaden Fusify kind of ended up having to go on the defensive as he looks to aggress onto the red buff momentarily. The rest of Flashpoint, though, are doing the right and Harpy, so Fusify has to disengage for the time being. Because Spotify, meanwhile, under pressure in this lane still, thanks to the Jingwei at the time being. Both these hunters, though, totally very much 
want to focus on farm and play the late game. That's pretty much the early game Hunter's focus, and that's why we've been seeing so many Jingwei's and Hachimans yep. in the meta thus far when they're not able to get the Shibalanke specifically. So it doesn't surprise me that they're just going to wait it out, especially with some of the new item changes, getting the better power spike and power curve rather in the mid game, specifically this Asi Ikaval. Speaking of Hunters as well, I mean, we've seen a couple of other Hunters rise to the occasion just lately. Ho Yi getting a bit more play just as of late as well mm. in the SPL. So we'll see if that changes, especially with the new patch dropping this week as well. Obviously, it's patch day today. Yeah. And Ho Yi did get a bit of a love there towards his ultimate. We'll see if that makes an impact as time goes on. So far, though, approaching five minutes in, no deaths. Mid laners, Warchi has the Book of Toth online. And he's now farming that up as Julio will get the, the third Totem of Coup of the game. And Farrakrix on the opposite end compared to Warchi going for the Penetration Boots rush instead. Probably going to wrap that up with a Kronos Pennant. A Giannis with cooldown reduction becomes more utility based. And that's a great style when you're getting an aggressive Johnny on the Ao Kuang that's going to want to penetrate that backline. He's going to be relying on multiple portals, multiple thresholds to be able to get in and out of the action. But surprisingly to see the pen boots, because normally you want to get the shoes of focus for 30% CDR. Third blue buff in a row invaded successfully by Team Queso on this right-hand side. Julio will get that again and continue the beatdown onto Sibi. Really trying to slow down this Sun Wukong's pacing in this lane, totally, but he's doing a very good job, Sibi, of keeping pace. That's right. Despite losing the first blue buff, he's been still able to keep track of the experience per minute, barely behind Julio, losing only about three Totem of Ku. So you're giving up Queso 375 gold total. But I think more importantly than the 375 gold, it's the opposite end of the mini-map. I would say where the mid lane is suffering a little bit. The dual lane is not able to really keep up. Shekio is that level 7 marker because Spainify kind of holding the wave outside of his tower. So we're going to probably see some action around this Fenrir Circuit supports now that they're finally level 5. And you can see both those supports on the right hand side of the map right now. Just continuing that, allowing the Hunters just to keep farming up in the jungle. Draco Marina will give a bit of a kiss towards Johnny, and Johnny does not like those advances at all. He'll back away, but straight away Fusify gets the Ragnarok off into the through space and time for the extra damage. And Farrakrik gets his name on the board in the positive column. We talked about it before, you new man, these supports are going to be the first to engage. Surprised to see Draco Marino not pull the trigger on the last breath to Johnny, knowing that there was no purification beads. He opted for Blink at level 1. He got the Cobra's Kiss, and then he Death Bane. And in between the Cobra's Kiss, the Death Bane, and then the last breath, there's enough of a window for Johnny to water illusion away. And that's exactly what happened. Normally, if you want to guarantee CC, you have to Cobra's Kiss immediately into the last breath. And that's what allowed Johnny to escape and give enough time for Fusify to return the aggressive favor. Only problem with that, though, Tully, is if he does, Draco Marino does get aggressive against Johnny there, is he didn't have any backup around him. Would he really have had a kill, or would he have just forced Johnny back to base? He probably would have got him down to about 30% health, health or less, and maybe forced him back to base, which is honestly not a bad thing this early in the game when you're really trying to get these gold per minute online, get the second items complete. Your Bancroft's talent is a huge power spike. You speak about gold online, and the gold fury has been pulled. Queso swarming around it right now and Flashpoint are not aware of the situation whatsoever. Maybe they are, but they just weren't in a position to do much about defending it. So even though the first bug goes to Flashpoint and they get a bit of bonus gold because of that, it's Queso that are now up and in the lead. But they have been for quite a while. Objectively, they've been on top, right side of the map, left side of the map, and even some Got ganks. Him. Got him, but Kaspanify will get away with the horsey to the safety of his tier 1 tower. Won't actually base at the moment. Does he have any health potions still ticking? I guess so. He's very confident and hanging around here. But at the same time, you can't really go back to base when there's a full wave, Tolly. You've got That's to stay true. for the greed option, right? If I learn anything from Zam, man, it's hashtag <laughs> one more wave. So I respect the play from Kaspanify. Very fortunate that he didn't eat the basic attack from the Sarket afterwards. Where's Turtle? Got bit baited there by Johnny looking for the extra bit of poke damage, and now he's going to be an unstable vortex as oh, well. Wow. He will survive. He's space and time ready. It is. Is Firecrick thinking Do about it? it? I think he is, you know. You saw him the looking there games. on the corner. There's he's so like... many mind games here, but I like what Worcester is doing because he's putting himself in a position that he does have enough time to react if he did see those portals come through the mid lane. He's putting himself on the opposite side of the wall. You try to say he wasn't like shopping at the same time. Yeah, I he, do that he, way he too did much. not have his item shop that? menu. 
It depends. Like uh, when you when you base and you already open in the shop, going okay, I'm gonna get this. If and I'm this. full health as a soul or yeah. Okay, but if you're low health, would you still do it? No, definitely not. I still do. I can't help it, man. I don't know why. I'm just gonna get out of the base quicker. I'm not even back there yet. Yeah. And then you die over a blink circuit over the wall or something. Because as humans in society, we've evolved to the point where we're always looking to multitask, Hindu man. So yeah, we're gonna be looking for those ways to yeah. get back to base faster and look for the item shops faster because we're always planning on steps C, D, and E, and not even worried about A and B. Well, F and G are under pressure right now. Or F is in Fusify is. He has to leap away back to safety for the time being because Spotify will pick up the purple buff. However, he's level 9 to Chekio's level 10. So you can see the Hunter situation at the moment slightly favoring that of Queso. But the support situation slightly for Fusify. So all in all, the dual lane still relatively even. A little surprised to see this lead out of Chekio knowing Draco Marino has been in this lane a little bit more, I would say, than Fusify. But as a Xing Wei, you're able to get back to base and get those back camps on every single respawn. And that's given him not only the Devil Gloves, but about an 18 stack lead. That's about three waves. So you're looking at a one and a half minute difference of stacks. Interesting decision from Draco Marino here. Going for the Magi's Cloak as his first major item after boots here. Clearly worried about the focus. He's already received a little bit of that from Fusify and the stuns that will come through. Yeah. But there is a bit of a lack of CC in Flashpoint here, Tolly. Sure. And I think that's why Draco Marino might be investing this early. But he's not going to get much health because of this. Nothing feels worse as a Sarkat player than to be disrupted from your full combination. So I respect the Mad Guy's Cloak Rush immediately. You opted for Blink at level 1, which is good for playmaking opportunities. You put yourself out there as a support, trusting your backline to follow up. Warchi and Chekio, it's their responsibility to go when Draco Marino goes. So Mad Guy's Cloak is going to be a selfish build, which is fine knowing that Draco Marino is thrusting himself out there. Well, thrusting himself to the solo lane right now is Johnny, but he was on a ward the entire time, so Julio was very aware of those advances. And now Johnny will pick up the Totem Maku. First run of the game for Flashpoint to go with their one kill. Still down that goal fury, however, and how this game's gone. Very antsy sort of game, so to speak, here, Tolly. Both teams really just not wanting to give up much. Not too much, knowing that this is the European side of things. They're historically known for the more slow, methodical games, trying to see what they can push and pull out of you. Kind of like taking water out of a cactus to an extent. So We could just call it intelligent gaming. That's what Europeans do. We have intelligent gaming. Yeah, and North America just smorks. We get it. That, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear, you know? But... Between these two teams, they've been known to also make the rapid-fire plays when they have these opportunities. But in this specific game, neither of them are really showing those opportunities to the other. Right, and Harpies will go the way of Queso there. Farrow Crick did use the Unstable Vortex off the mark. Leap in from Fusify. Catches Drake and Marino brings up worse Turl for a ride. And that's going to get the ultimate out of Warchi in response. So a bit of a trade of ultimates in the mid lane between the support and Warchi. Uh, beads were also used by West Hill. Still looking for more in the mid lane left side. Mid camp's not due to respawn for a little bit longer. Draco Marino does have that ultimate. Fusify could be in trouble if Draco Marino opts for the blink, but it's only Warchi around the corner as Worst Turtle did have to back to base. Not gonna lie there, Tully. That middle lane trade was quite interesting. I think that works out great for Fusify. Leaps on yeah. one target, gets rid of the Magi's cloak. Ragnarok's Worst Turtle yeah. gets the beads. If that keeps happening time and time again, like they're gonna keep coming up with results. It's a rinse and repeat process, mm -hmm. and considering Queso didn't punish the no Ragnarok from Fusify on those left side mid camps, just gives Flashpoint more freedom to kind of keep grouping up there and control those mid camps maybe trying to get themselves back into the game after having losing five whole totem of coups having losing the goal fury if they can at least control these mid camps that could help them get back into this one oh yeah i actually think queso heard you say the word fury because straight away they're back over there again this time for the primal fury because spotify's on the way over but what can he really do against four men just swarming around not much beautify will get there in time to see the fury fall that's all it's going to be. Warchi may get picked in the mid, though, as he tries to escape here. Johnny goes aggressive. Great work from Draco with a blink to slow down the aggression on Warchi and Pusify. Didn't take too much poke than he needed to as Johnny leaps away from the danger zone. A great escape out of Johnny, but still not punishing Keizo for doing this Primal Fury because Painify feeling a little frisky against Chekio, but there goes the Ragnarok. Where's your beads now, friend? Well, not a friend anymore. Worst Hill will fall down to Sibby, who gets credit for the kill. Julio looked to get aggressive against Farrakrik, who pulls away to safety, but that's the end of the engagement. Primal Fury for one death, I guess, overall. 
not doom and gloom for Queso at all so far. As long as Flashpoint can get this tier 1 mid tower, this wouldn't be a bad trade in the slightest. Warchi trying to mitigate a little bit of that wave. A beautiful play, I would say, knowing that killing the melee minions, allowing Julio to penetrate that backline completely disrupts Flashpoint's tier 1 mid tower play. And like you said, it would have been important if they did get that, but they don't. Now Jackie gets a chance oh. to Kaspani by the Aegis will save the day. Will he land down? Yes, he will, but the portal from Farakrik will escape him from danger. Draco Marina was trying to close the gap, but he just couldn't find the angle. And even if he did ambush in without last breath, there was no real kill potential with the entire Sirket kit down. Level 9 Sirket support. Not going to finish the job that time around, but getting the Aegis an important cooldown to take note of if you're Queso. Really interesting to see more Sirket still coming into play though, specifically when we've seen the fact that, you know, the damage numbers kind of went down, scaling went up, but mm. base stats did go down on Sirka. Obviously, the ultimate is still true damage. That's true. But it's still not enough at this point, and I'm not sure if we're going to see more Sirka as time goes on. They don't seem to be working out as well as people hope them to. And it's also the passive that utilizes a percent damage of your health, so it's not the worst thing to still run the Sirket support, especially in a world where you're still running the Fenrir supports, the Naja supports. Mm from time to time, and these small skirmishes of the 2v2, maybe even 3v3s, pre-level 5, if you can double uh, Cobra's Kiss, Deathbane, that's going to be a lot of unexpected burst damage out of the oh. air quotes support. Well, air quotes, Chekio needs his air moves right about now. He gets caught and gets the beads and he held it. Fusify played that so well. He just sat there and went, all right, Chekio, you're going to try and... Oh, that's a nice beat you've got there, friend. Let me give my kill to Johnny. And the reason he held off that bite is because he knew Chekio didn't have the airstrike. Yep. Now making the rotation is Queso, but they're outnumbered. It's a three on four with Warchi now around this left side. I think one thing we can see about this, Tully, is that when teams actually communicate and say, hey, check your result is down. Yep. Queso were like, oh, sorry, Flashpoint were like, okay, we've got to go aggressive now. This is our window of opportunity. A lot of players in their general games won't do that. They'll, they might get called like beads are down, but nobody really makes use of it. It's very important for a jungler and a support player to try and make use of that situation. That's right. It's a lot of a shorter cooldown between the ultimates of Chekyo versus his purification bead. So the window becomes shorter and recognizing this Fusify right at the same time, at the right place at the right time rather, stuns out Chekyo during the agility. A very short window to execute and he played that perfectly. And with that one pick, they're not able to get any tower. They got some chip damage on the left side. But Flashpoint, despite being behind about 2,500 gold, they've been stagnantly behind mm. only 2,500 gold for the entire game. And a lead of only 2,500 gold is not going to result much for Queso in about 10 minutes from now. Do players feel this different on that thought? Warchi under pressure again in the mid lane, tries to get away to the best of his ability. Can't escape. Worst till win for an execute. Won't find it. Instead, Johnny gets another double kill. And would you believe it? An Ao Kuang for Flashpoint is doing well. Level 15 Ao Kuang with Bancroft's talent pen boots demonic grip. You gotta respect that burst damage. Chekio trying to make something happen with Draco Marino, but the Aegis from Farrakrook is binding him enough time to keep the Jukes going. Draco will finally get the kill, but Chekio also went down in trade as Flashpoint made the rotation. It's six to one. A three for one little exchange in the past 30 seconds and with the tier one mid tower down. Flashpoint don't care about the two Fury that Queso got earlier because they're now kind of controlling this game. Even on the left side, you can see Kaspainify going for the tier one. I think one thing a lot of people fall into the trap of Tolly is they look at gold difference and go, we're losing or winning. But then other players and other teams will also look at KDA, and the kills situation sure. and go, well, I guess we're losing if we're down six kills. But they're not. They're actually up in gold. That's right. Sometimes. So kills, you should never be encouraged or discouraged when you see kills, a differential. Even if it's like... 15 so kill if differential. If I'm 0 15, but I'm still equal level, does that mean I'm a good player? No. Okay. Well, what are you trying to tell me then? Because I'm confused. I'm saying a team difference in kills, okay. not individual so player if my performance. Team is down 0 and 15. Are you trying to say I've got a good team? If we're even in no. gold. No. Where, where I was going with this is you shouldn't be discouraged. Oh. Okay. Or, or encouraged if you are with the lead. Okay. If you're stuck in traffic, you shouldn't be discouraged.
Yeah, you're okay. still gonna get to where you're gonna get. You, to. You're, ju you're just of the opinion of like, just don't be discouraged in life, aren't you? That's yeah. What it is. Okay. Think optimistically, Hindu man. Hey, Queso, think optimistically about being up 300 gold, but the enemy team has Johnny and Fusify, who brings Warchi on a wild ride one more time. Aegis already down from Warchi as he gets away. Joe coming in reinforced out too. Huli on the back lines causing a lot of problems, but Sibi has entered the fray, and Warchi has found himself alone again. Sibi gets credit for the kill. Johnny to the back line, looking at Chet. Who has to alter ways because Spotify closes the gap? Oh. But Johnny's already there to pick up the pieces and get his fifth kill of the game. But Shaggy responds at the last possible second. Defensive fatal strike at a worst turtle. Two for one at the end of the day, but they're not, not over. done yet. Flashpoint won a little bit more because Spotify taking Oof. a lot of damage out of Julio. Drake and Marino is back and healthy. But Farrakrik will have his portal available. Only a kiss for Sibby, and Sibby doesn't mind too many kisses. He'll fall back to his tier one tower, approaching 20 minutes in, and a fight. Over a red, was that over the red buff? I think it was, and Farquick actually has it, so I'm guessing that's what happened. That pretty much was all that it was, Hindu man, with Gold Fury now respawning. That mm. two for two doesn't really give either team a real advantage. However, the respawn timer is favoring Queso out slightly, but the relic difference could be the point of contention. Flashpoint, I think, have the advantage in that department. Yeah, definitely. We both play from the solo lane so far. Julian and Sibby both had pretty good games for themselves, respectively. Both doing a very good job of farming as well, considering how the game always begins over in the solo lane these days. A lot of pressure on the coup. The blue buff invades. But if you look at it, Sibby is actually up a level. When he had his blue buff invaded, I believe it was three times in a row That's in the true. early stages, and he was very busy with trying to deal with the situations there. Yeah, as a solo Kong player, making these rotations is what's going to allow him to just get the lead over Julio with that one level difference. Between level 18 and 19, it's not that big of a difference, so they're both still in the same relevancy category as Johnny. Kind of between a rock and a hard place, taking all that unnecessary poke. Well, Fusify is trying to set up Chekio to eat her through space and time, which he does. But Chekio will immediately use the airstrike back to safety. This is all precursor to the Gold Fury that is looming on this left-hand side. Flashpoint in a bit of a better situation, I'd say, as a couple of members of Queso have to go back to base. But it looks like that's going to be the same case for Flashpoint here. Pressure relieved as Queso get the Oracle. I'm not sure if that was Draco Marino body blocking our Fusify or if that was just Fusify waiting for the portal at the last possible I think it was moment. Waiting. But unfortunate timing because Chekyo didn't have beads and he was able to just narrowly airstrike before the Ragnarok took him to the worst possible side of the Gold Fury. So Gold Fury still stands, but the Pyromancer is available too on this right hand side. So one team could recognize that and look for a switcheroo. Julio's still in the mid lane though, so with the solo laners being over here, always gives you an idea that things are still going on. Draco jumps over a wall as Sibby blinked over at the same time. Very weird event situation there. Pressure onto Julio, but he is Bologna. But he won't get a chance to Eagles rally because Johnny has decided he would like to become a dragon. But where is he going to land is the question. Right on top of Warchi, water illusioning away. He's going to bait for the huge through well. space and time. Jingu Bang from Sibby secures the kill onto Chekio. The unstable Vortex secures the kill onto Draco Marino. Soon after that, Worst Turtle falls, wow. as did Julio, and it's 21 minutes in. Flashpoint, five members strong, picking themselves up a Dia side and now barreling down the mid lane. That just goes to show how easily Flashpoint can punish you for one little mistake, one little out of position below it, into the execute, into the tier two tower dive, into the through space in time, and just like that, Flashpoint ending game one. The big thing with that one, Tully, Julio there, should he have ulted earlier? I, I, yeah. I can understand his decision making though with holding it, because he's waiting for his team to get in position. He can Eagles rally in place, hit three or four targets, mm -hmm. but the burst was just too much. I think after he got Fenrir stunned, he got stunned, I think, again by Sibi, and then after that point, during those two CCs, he couldn't do anything, I believe. Unless he preemptively Eagles rally mm -hmm. before the Fenrir stun, he was dead to rights, because that execute came so quickly. A rough game yet again for Queso. Queso were up quite considerably at moments in that game. Golf here is down a yeah. couple of times. Pressure over in the solo lane too. But at the end of the day, it still came up trumps for Flashpoint. That's three sets in a row they've won, and this set they're, they're losing again, right? So Queso. far, they still have a, the rest of the best of three to go for after losing game number one. Flashpoint so far keeping the streak alive. So far for Queso. Let's find, oh, sorry, Flashpoint, I should say. Let's go to the desk and break it down. Every once in a while, a team decides to let Johnny get out Kwong, and every once in a while, a team loses against Flashpoint. Flashpoint take game number one, 22 minutes after Johnny wins a team fight and wins the game.
He didn't do it alone, though. I, I, I do <laughs> believe that all of uh, Flashpoint definitely helped to back up Johnny. But it's in, it's crazy because Queso were actively trying to force bad engagements for Flashpoint. It, it's just so difficult for them because of Far Crick on the Giannis. I sure. think that Far Crick had a lot of really impactful portals and through spaces and times that were able to effectively disengage for Flashpoint. Got to agree there. Sibby, of course, comes through in the clutch as well and just plays the uh, the. Sun Wukong so so strongly and, and again everybody kind of on a comfort pick Johnny no exception to the rule here he is just finding the right spot bling to the front man his mechanics on this character are silly and he picks himself a double kill it's just how does he get it how like every single time a team tries to beat his AO and they always lose and they always think that they're going to be different. Like, hey, no, Taco, I, I swear to God, I'll beat Johnny this time. <laughs> You're not going to beat Johnny on AO. I, you know, like I, we were talking in the green room. Uh, Evan Rain Day from Paladins was asking us because we were all sitting there kind of going nuts about Johnny on Al Kwong. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, look, every once in a while, the team decides to, like, just test the waters. It's been two or three years, Johnny. Are you still this damn hot on this character? And then Johnny says, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, 7-1-5. and five. I, I don't know what more proof, evidence you need. Just stop letting him have the free is God for him. It's tough. It, it is really tough, especially when you look at the pans. Shibalanki and, and Ardeo, I think you can, that Ardeo ban can be an Alquang. Shibalanki ban, sure, maybe you're stuck there. And the problem is, when you ban the Alquang, then you're stuck with the Bakasura. The, there, there's a number of other options that Johnny goes to. But I feel like Johnny on Alquang is, is as close to a guaranteed win as you can get, even understanding that the rest of the squad has to do their, their, do their part. Well, the audio ban becomes even more confusing at the fact that they let the AO through because it's not like they were even really trying to draft anything that audio is super complicated to, like, face off against. The, the yeah. worst thing I can think of is the circuit for Jacob Marino, but even then, that's your support. So if he's building a little bit tankier, I don't necessarily think he needs to be as concerned with something like a cripple field.